All right. So today we are talking with Patton Dade. And uh, so my name is Carl White, and you are listening to the Lone Originator's Edge, powered by the Scotsman's Guide, the awesome, cool people over there. So, Patton, you and I have never met, and we've never spoken before. Is that correct? That is correct, sir. But it's a pleasure oh. to meet you. So uh, it's a pleasure. Uh, dude, I look forward to hearing this. So uh, so I get a call from the awesome people over at the uh, Scotsman's Guide, and um, they said, hey, we got a top producer we want you to interview for the podcast. So... Uh, Dude, and, and hey, what, there's one rule here on the podcast. You, you seem like a really nice, humble uh, gentleman. I need you to take your humble hat off. <laughs> and uh, we're, we're going to ask some questions. And we're just looking, uh, you know, we're looking to help uh, either with strategies and or with inspiration to loan officers across the nation. And that's kind of what we're looking to do here. So just kind of take your humble hat off here for the next 30 minutes. Okay, um, so, um so what's your production, man? Tell me, like, like who, who are you and what are you doing? Well, so, you know, VA is my specialty. So I, I, I mainly live in the VA space. Uh, probably 80 to 90% of my loans end up being VA. Just, you know, I'm a, I have an Army background. Um, spent eight years active duty in the Army and uh, flew helicopters for eight and a half years. It was a, it was a great way to spend my 20s is what I tell people. My man. Um, Good not, for you, not, buddy. Not necessarily something I'd want to do today, maybe, but... Yeah. Um, it was, it was awesome when it lasted. Right. So, nice. um, and I got into mortgages about 10 years ago and started, started as a consumer direct guy in a call center. And, um, I'd been in sales for about 12 years before that. So I kind of knew how to sell a little bit, but, um, you know, went into consumer direct and I, I did that for about five years, but I realized that one thing I was pretty good at was connecting with veterans. Um, the other thing I realized was not very many people in the business are truly good at, VA loans and doing it the right way. And they don't know the customer. They don't understand the customer. They don't understand the challenges uh, that our, you know, our active duty people have when they're PCSing across the country and they've never, they've never been to a location. So, and mm -hmm. so people just don't, you know, they, I saw a gap there where there was a, there was a problem in our industry. And uh, so I really leaned into that. And then I realized that I, I do pretty well making relationships with people just over the phone in the call center. And I started, I started to generate referrals just through the relationships that I built with a customer. And so I, I leaned into that pretty heavily and, you know, kind of went viral on a couple of Facebook groups and things like that for being a great loan officer that knows a lot about VA. And um, then COVID hit and things really got crazy. And my, my database grew significantly and I got a ton of referrals and um, like year to date this year, I'm over 150 million um 300 300 plus units so far this year um and and, and let me time stamp this uh so as we're recording this uh we're in the middle of October 2024 yes sir and so so here we are just starting the fourth quarter i guess somewhere in that neighborhood and so uh so you're 150 for the 150 million for the year million, so far for, for the year, how many how many units is that? Like, how many units are you running a month, Patton? Um, year to date is 300, 310. 310 so yeah. far. Again, so so about roughly, thirty, probably thirty five a month. Yeah, um, a little little over one a month, one a day. Yeah, but but uh, yeah, I moved companies at the end of last year, and so you yeah, know, I, hate, I, I bet they hated to see you. Bet they hated to see you go. Well, uh, you know, and. The, it yeah, I get it. Is, I get right? it. Right, and uh, I get so it. so it took a little while to rebuild the pipeline. So January, February, we're kind of slow rebuilding, and yeah, I can gain momentum. So the last couple months, we're averaging, you know, fifty plus units a month. My man, good for you, buddy. Yeah. Hey, I got a couple questions here. So I'm I'm really kind of a marketing guy. That's really what yeah. I'm known for. And um, so, uh, so I got I got a lot of questions here. So first of all, focusing in on the VA, uh, you went consumer direct. And then you built that up. So was that through another company? Like they generated leads and you followed those consumer directs? Is that how So when I, when I first started, it was it was like lending tree leads. I get it. Okay, you I know, got it. All, all the lead aggregators would sell sell the leads to the company and, you know, they'd come into our CRM and you just sit there with the headset on and dial and dial, and dial. I knew nothing about mortgage when I started, like legitimately yeah. didn't know what DTI meant, didn't know what LTV was. And here I am on the phone trying to talk to people. I'd get up after every single call. When I talked to a borrower, I'd 
try to figure out what the heck was going on in their life and how I could potentially help them. And, and obviously it was mostly refinances through a consumer direct thing. Um, and I'd get up and I'd walk into the branch manager's office and I'd be like, I don't know what I'm talking about. Like, mm. here's what I said. Here's what they said. What, what kind of, what should I have asked? You know, stuff like that. Right. And I burned a, I burned a hole in the carpet, like back and forth between his office <laughs> all day, every day. Yeah. Um, but it, you know, I'd make 150, 200, 300 phone calls a day, you know, just cold calls essentially. My man. Um, and, and that's what I realized, you know, in, in that business, like the, the key to this is building a relationship across it doesn't matter if you're if you're in consumer direct or whether you're a, a retail loan officer, a broker, whatever. This is about building relationships with the customer. And so I realized right away that, hey, I'm a veteran. Um, who do I like to talk to? I like to talk to veterans. I like to hear their stories. I like to hear their background. And so um, so when I was able to make that connection and go, wait a minute, you're a veteran. What service were you in? You know, and, and we'd start that discussion. We'd end up talking about our time in the service for 15, 20 minutes before we ever even disclose or just started discussing mortgages. Yeah. And so that, that's kind of how I built my business, right? Is just, just being great at just making relationships with people. So you started off by, uh, you worked for a company and then they got the leads and you just smiled and dialed on those leads. Right. So you built up a, sounds like a large past database. And so is that where you get most of your loans now is marketing to your past database? The vast majority of my loans come from uh, referrals from past customers. Vast majority. So marketing to your past database. Absolutely. So, so, all right. So um, so tell me what that looks like. So I, you've got this large past database. How do you market to these people? Well, you know, what? It's, it's for me, it's it's so much about the relationship with people. It's not just putting them on an email on a drip campaign. Um, it's you got to connect with them. You got to pick up the phone. You got to call them. You've got to make sure that when you're talking to them initially, that they know that you're around for the long haul, that you're going to be here for the refinance. That you know when rates drop and you know earls are a thing again, you know that they're they're calling you instead of just calling the mailer that they get. You know those those crazy mailers that are deceptive at best. Yeah, you know, making mm -hmm. sure that they know like, hey, I'm I'm here to take care of you. And then really, my my attitude is this: is when when I'm talking to a customer, really from the very first time I talk to them. You know, they, they usually have a pretty good conversation. We have a, you know, we we build rapport and we do all those things. And then I say, hey, look, if you have a friend, friend or family that I can help, please send them my way. And they say, okay. And then when I talk to them and they're, you know, they're under contract. Hey, if you have friends or family, send them my way. Hey, if you know anybody that can help, send them my And I, so I have that conversation with them. You know, they say, you got to hear something seven times. So I make sure I'm saying that throughout the, the process. And, you know, it's become, I've got a great name for the VA space, right? I'm named after General Patton. Patton, yeah. <laughs> so, so people don't forget it out. And that, I think that helps me a little bit. And so when they go, hey, who was that guy? I didn't, you know, it's not hard for them to come up with my name yeah. in their phone. And then they do a group text with a, with a new client and just say, hey, Patton, take care of my buddy, Carl. And I mm. go, okay, hey, Carl, nice to meet you. When can we jump on a call? And off we go. How often do you, so, so once, um, once you close somebody, how do you stay in touch with them? You know what? A lot of times it's just simply a text message or a voice memo. Um, I've I've started doing more video memos to people to where, and I try not I try to make it personal to to really every single person because the way I see it is, you know, if you if you have an old friend and you haven't seen them in three years and they call you up today and they say, hey, Carl, um, I'm moving on Saturday. Would you like to come help me move, carry a couch or something with me? You're gonna you're gonna look at them and just be like, "Yeah, no, I'm I'm busy." But if you've got a buddy that you've talked that you golf with every Saturday, and he calls you today and he says, "Hey, Carl, um, I can't golf on Saturday. I need to move. Can you come help me?" You're gonna drop what you're doing. And you're gonna say, "Yeah, I'll cancel my my tea time and I'll come help you." Right. So it it is about the relationship. It's about it's about how do you you know you got to stay in front of that person. You got to constant. You got to be in contact with them constantly. I have a big enough database that um, I, I don't I don't have the bandwidth to maybe be as personal as I'd like to with all of the people. Um, yeah. But I make sure that when I do touch them, that it's you know we're not just talking about hey I can save you money right now. Right, um, right, right. You know because because they know what that is. They they it's it's disingenuous um, to think that when I call them and say hey you can refinance now, it's disingenuous to think that they don't know that I'm going to make money off that right. So it's kind of like the the whole moving thing. Um, if you've had a relationship with them over a period of time, they're gonna they're gonna know that you're you're in it for their best interest. Yeah, I love that man. 
You know, it's uh, you've tapped in, into a method that I call the simple ask. You know, and you just simply ask them, hey, if you have a friendly, a friend, family, a coworker, you know, looking to buy, sell, or refinance, can I count on you? Give me a call. Just a simple ask. And it, it, it's got, you know, uh, my friend Frank Gray, he calls it the new way to say goodbye. So when you're on the phone, instead of two grown men or two grown women saying bye bye, yeah. which is it kind of sounds weird when you say it that way. Uh -huh. Instead of saying that, you replace it in with your call to action. And it's really it's I think sometimes, you know, we we see people, they set up all these fancy uh, setups and CRMs and follow up systems and all this other stuff. And and, uh, and 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 all, and all that's important. Right. I believe all that's important. But it sounds like most people miss out on the very simple thing that you're doing. And frankly, just pick up the phone and tell them, tell them, thank you. Tell them you appreciate well, them. Yeah, there, there are a lot of tools that, that can be helpful in keeping you in front of your clients. But. I mean, I get all sorts of emails every day. I get 50 junk mails a day from, you know, various companies that I've worked with in the past or bought something from in the past and I'm on their mail list and I just go delete, 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 yeah. delete. And it wouldn't matter if it was a mortgage person or not, or somebody I thought I knew, I just know it's junk mail. Yeah. Right. And I'm probably not going to pick it, but I'm going to look at the text message. I'm going to look at the, if they send me a video that's 30 seconds long, I'm going to probably watch it, you know? So there's, there's better ways to do it, I think. Hey, so, so here you're closing... 50 ish loans a month. You're, you're in good stride here. Are, are, um, are most of them in the uh, Phoenix area, which is where you live? Are most of them in the Phoenix area or are they all throughout the country? Very, very few of them are in Phoenix. I'm licensed in almost every state. Um, so I'm working on, I'm working through like 50 hours of CE right now. <laughs> yeah. Lots of fun. Um, but no, my, my, I started off in a, so I started off in a bank. Um, so I didn't have to do the licensing stuff. I was good in 50 states and I built my network in 50 states. And I found that, um, you know, being able to say, hey, I can help anybody, you know, anywhere they are, whether it's purchase or refinance, I, you know, and then so when I moved away from a FDIC bank and had to get licensed, I was like, I don't have a choice. My customers expect me to be able to take care of anybody they send me. And so yeah. I got went and got licenses everywhere. And I've carried that on. And, um, you know, kind of the way I look at you know, when, when it comes to my focus is not really on realtors, although I'm, you know, I'm definitely realtor focused and purchase focused. Um, the way I see it as a realtor in general, they know how many loan officers, you know, your average realtor knows what, 30, 40 yeah. loan officers, 50, maybe who knows a, a ton. Right. And they're getting right. calls every day from a loan officer saying, Hey, let me take you to coffee. Let me take you to lunch. Let's, I want to earn your business, all this stuff. Right. So when a realtor gets a, has a referral that they generated themselves and they're going to give it to a loan officer, um, you have to be number one out of 40 or number one out of 50. And you, or you have to be so top of mind with that, that realtor that they go, this is my guy. You have to go to him. Now, with when you're a little bit more focused on the consumer and the, the, a consumer buys a house, how many loan officers do they know? Probably one, right? Very right. few people really, truly know a loan officer. And so when when you take really, really, really great care of a customer and they know that your heart is in it, then um, you have the right to say, hey, look, when you run into somebody, send them mm. my way. And and that's that's how my business has been built. And it's been, you know, it, it seems to work. Yeah, apparently. You know, I'm a little surprised, though. I have to tell you. So I can see where the first loan is a VA. But then when I'm asking my, when I'm asking, when you're asking your database, hey, who do you know who, right? Mm -hmm. I'm surprised you don't get more of a variety of different loans coming in because what's the odds that all of their neighbors and all of their friends also were, were veterans, you know? So I'm, yeah, so I'm a little also, surprised. So here's the thing, here's the thing about veterans. Um, we like, we like each other generally. You know, we've been through maybe the same crucible, um, the same challenges, the same the same experiences, whether you served overseas or whether you were in combat or, you know, all those types of things tend to make you very, um, maybe not distrustful of people that are outside that circle, but certainly no, I get it. somebody that's in that circle more, right? It's a brotherhood or a sisterhood. For I sure. And yeah. and so even the people that, that I really build relationships with outside of the military, the people that, you know, in my neighborhood, I've got, there's half a dozen veterans that live in my neighborhood and I'm closer with them than I probably am with, with other folks, just because mm -hmm. we have something in common. 
Um, yeah. We have something deeper than just we live in the same neighborhood. We have we have shared experiences that we can fall back on over a beer and talk about. So it's pretty natural for veterans to congregate with other veterans. You know, it's like yeah. you go to the Serengeti, you see a herd of elephants. You don't see a, a gazelle like hanging out right in the middle of that herd, right? All the gazelles are together and all the elephants are together. And, you know, you, your herd runs with your herd. And so I run with the herd I'm in, you know? Yeah. Very interesting. What is your team? Uh, and you know, what? I, I, just, I, I want to clarify one thing, though, just for our listeners, because like anytime I do these interviews, I always try to put myself in the listener's head and they're, they're coming up with these as I would be if I was listening to something. They're always coming up with the what I call the yeah, buts. Yeah, yeah. but. And so the yeah, but that's coming up. Yeah, but I'm not I'm not a veteran. Right. Yeah. Uh, so a, a buddy of mine. um, uh, Pat Fitzgerald, uh, for, for years running, has been one of the top VA loan officers in the state of Texas and occasionally is number one. Uh, he's been doing it a long time. He, he's got to be looking at retirement here if he hasn't already. Uh, but anyway, so he's not a veteran and he was number one in the state of Texas. So I just, you know, and, and I love what you're saying here, but I just as our as our listeners, if you're yeah, but I'm not a veteran, you don't have to be. You just have to honor them as my friend Pat does. And of course, we we're honoring you. Uh, Patton, and thanks, thanks for your service. And by just as an FYI, I'm an Air Force guy myself, uh, nah. so I'm not a. I, can I, I, wasn't can a, I make a joke? Is that? Is yeah, that yeah, I'm, I'm, no, I'll, I'll do it for you. I'm not a real man, uh, <laughs> no, but I'm. Uh, no, the uh, the joke I say to Air Force guys is, you know, that's a good alternative to military service. Yeah, yeah I like that. <laughs> I like that. A lot, a lot of truth to that. Uh, you know, perhaps. Carl. Let, let me let me touch on that. You know, the okay. the the reality is is that that veterans like to just. You know, if you take care of a veteran and you do it the right way, you don't yeah. have to be a veteran. Um, but if you if you treat them right and if you understand them and you, and you take great care of them, they know that your heart is there um, to take care of them. They're going to refer you. They're yeah. going to refer you. And so once you start, and, but you got to be great at a VA loan, right? Um, you've got to know the ins and outs. You got to know the how to calculate residual income. You got to know how to calculate the bonus entitlement. You got to know how to. You, you got to know the details of a VA loan because there is some nuance to it. And if you're not great at the details of VA loans, then I'd prefer you just not even mess with them because that's how VA loans have gotten such a bad rap in the in the mortgage industry in general or in the real estate world. Yeah. Is I really truly believe that it wasn't because VA loans were bad. They've never been hard. In fact, they're the most generous and flexible program of any program we have by a long ways, in my opinion. And so what's happened in our industry is that, that you know, a loan officer not knowing the details will originate a loan. It gets to the underwriter and the underwriter says, no, you can't do that. This is denied. And now the, the loan officer goes, okay, well, we got to do something else. But what do they tell the realtor and what do they tell the borrower? They don't say, hey, I screwed up. They say, well, the VA says you can't do that. And I disagree with them and I'm fighting with them, but they're not budging. Well, guess what? The VA doesn't see a VA loan until weeks after closing when it gets guaranteed, right? They never even touch it for, for a long time. They never even look at it, except in very rare circumstances. And so, you know, because the loan officer didn't have the intestinal fortitude to say, look, I made a mistake. I screwed up. I'm sorry. Um, they blame it on the VA and people buy that because the VA is you know, a big bureaucracy and, you know, it's government and it's, you know, all the stuff. And that's, that's where I think the bad raps came from. And, and it's our job as originators, if you're, if you're going to do them, do them great. If you're, if you're going to just dabble in it, you know, don't do them, send them to somebody yeah. else that knows what they're doing and can take great care of the people that served our country. Yeah. Well said. Hey, let me ask you this. So uh, closing 50 uh, ish per month, what, what does a team look like? So, if uh, so, I call the number that the realtor gave to me. What what happens next? Or I, I call so so my 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 neighbor Bob or my neighbor Lisa gave me your phone number. I call that number. Walk me through this. Patton answers the phone. <laughs> Patton answers the cell phone at all times, day, night, and weekend, to the great chagrin of my wife, probably. Mm -hmm. um, but I I do have an LOA. Okay. Um, I do have um, two junior loan officers that'll that'll help out with stuff. Okay. Um, and um, then then I've got a team. They don't necessarily originate under me, but we've got a team of fifteen to eighteen veterans. Um, you know, we closed one hundred and hundred plus units last month. 
um, on that team. So we've got a bunch of people that think and act, you know, very similar to me. You know, they they they're here to to serve our veteran client. Wait, wait, let me make this. So so we have two junior. So we have you. We got we an have LOA. Two. We've got we've got actually three three junior guys that I've brought into the industry, and I'm you know I've taught them how to do VA loans. And, and, then, and then who's this other group that you just mentioned? So I, so people that don't originate, um, that don't roll up into my 50, um, I've got, we've got a team of about 18 people total, um, that are pretty, they're pretty much all like, veterans. Except so for so they're the back, they're the back end in other words. So like, well, no, they're, they're other originators that just originate on my, in my branch. Oh, I got it. I got it. I got it. So, I, got so it. Our, I got it. Yeah. So our branch, so you're, you're a branch manager and you're one of, 20 ish loan officers. Yes, sir. Got it. Okay. I got, I got the picture now. And so, so for your personal team, uh, there's, there's two or three junior loan officers, one LOA. What does a, what does a junior loan officers do that the LOAs don't do? Like define those two roles for me. You know what? It's, it's actually very similar. Um, but they're, you know, they're licensed and, um, so that they can have more of the, the, in, more of the conversations with people, you know, from a, from a regulatory standpoint, they can, they can talk rates and, and fees and all that sort of stuff. So, uh, but they're growing up to, you know, and as they, as they're ready, they, they'll spread their wings and originate in their own, in their own little world. Good for you, man. So for somebody that's listening to this and uh, they're saying, all right, man, good stuff. A lot of VA <laughs> stuff. Um Patton, give me the first thing to do. So somebody's listening to this, Patton. Some a loan officers listen to this. Like one piece of advice you'd give them is the first step to making something happen is. You know what? There's. I'll give you. I'll give you two things. Like uh, somebody asked me, I don't know, a week or two ago. Like, if you were just starting in the industry, yeah, what would you do? And what I what I would say is I would be out. Um, number one, I would be out in my local community. I would be, um, networking with realtors. I would be at open houses as much as I could possibly be there. Um, and, and just building relationships. And, you know, when you go to an open house, it's not about, Hey, I've got this product and that product. Cause frankly, a realtor, I mean, they've heard it all before. Right. Yeah. Um, it's, I, I want to find people that, that I like and that like me. And that's not going to be everybody like you and I in person, maybe, maybe you wouldn't like me uh, even a little bit, you know? And well, let me just stop you there. I find that hard to believe, man. You seem like, uh... <laughs> but there, but there's people, right. You just don't click for whatever reason. I hear you. Like mm -hmm. don't, don't invest in that. Right. You you don't have to invest all your time just because you know, a realtor it doesn't mean that they they're going to like you and you have to like them. Mm -hmm. And frankly, it's a lot more fun doing business with people, you know, like, and trust. Yeah. And so, so you're there to build relationships. You're there to do life with people, right? If you're going to be a business partner with somebody and refer them business and they refer business back to you, you got to be with people that you know, like, and trust. And so I'd be focused on that. Um, the second thing I would do is, and it's kind of back to the no like, and trust is you got to find, you got to find your, your sphere of influence. Like where, where do you spend your time? Um, do you spend your time? Are you a Jeep guy? Right. There are a lot of Jeeps here in, in Phoenix and people go out in the desert and do the rock crawling stuff. Like if you're in a in a big network of Jeep people, well, OK, they probably know, like and trust you because you're you're there with them all the time. Right. You need to make sure that those people understand and know what you do, because, I, you know, generally, if you go in a room of, you know, just a random room of 100 people and you say, who's your mechanic? How many of you have a mechanic? They'll, you know, most people raise their hand. How many have a CPA? And most people raise their hand. How many people have a, you know, who do you, what's your, who's your hairdresser? And all the women will raise their hand. And all the guys are like, I go to sports, sport clips, right? Yeah. Um, next in line, right? Um, but if you said, how many people have a mortgage person? Very few would raise their hand. How many of you know a mortgage guy? Very few. Like our, our social media, if you're a mortgage person today, your social media is just, nothing but realtors and mortgage people saying the same things, right? But you might be the only mortgage person that these, you know, the the, the general public has in their feed, right? And so you got to make people aware of what you do and you got to do it in a way of service. And I think that comes through and, and just being authentically you. And so that's, that's what I would do is I would be social media and making sure I'm, I'm with, 
the people that already know, like, and trust me for whatever reason, and it, it, whether it's veterans, cool. But if, if it's the Jeep people, like they need to know you're a mortgage guy or gal. Yeah. And then, and then find, find realtors that you actually like, mm -hmm. and then lean into that and do life with them and be, you know, you'll end up going to, going to barbecues and, you know, baseball games and, you know, doing, doing life together. Yeah. Brother, I, I just have to tell you, it's, it's so refreshing. Uh, it's nice to see, uh, when nice guys win. And when I say guys, that's kind of a gender neutral term for me, but it's nice to see, uh, you seem like the nicest person on earth. And, uh, it's just, uh, it, it warms my heart to see such great success coming from somebody like you. And, um, Hey, is there, is there something, uh, we'll wrap this up. Uh, is there something that I should have asked you, uh, that I didn't? No, but, uh, you know, I think, I think the key to key to mortgage comes down to, do you, are you, you know, what are you in this business for? Um, are you in this business because you can make a lot of money because there's money to be made for sure. Right. Um, or are you in this business to serve, serve others? And if you're in the, this business to serve others and you have those kind of conversations with people and you do things always with their best interest in mind, um, that's going to come across. That's mm -hmm. going to come across over the phone. It's going to come across in your, you know, the posts you make on social media. It's going to be the, it's going to come across in everything you do. And that's where we should be as an industry. Unfortunately, there's, there have been, you know, too many unsavory characters in our industry over the years. Um and so I think that's where you can really set yourself apart and do this, do this job the right way. And people will see that and they'll appreciate that. And you're going to build, build better relationships and um, really just focus on the customer, focus on the customer and everything you do and everything's going to take care of itself. Outstanding brother. Good for you, man. I'm glad you're doing so well. Um, so um, I think that's it, man. I think we kind of covered everything. So uh, Patton, thanks so much for uh, being here. I really appreciate uh, you being part of it. And for all of our listeners, uh, thanks so much for the reviews. Thanks for forwarding this to three of your favorite loan officer friends. And behalf of our friend, on behalf of our friends over at the Scotsman's Guide, my name is Carl White. We'll see you on the next episode. Thanks again, everybody. Bye-bye. <music>